Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read 1 Samuel 31, 2 Samuel 1 to 4, Psalm 112, and Proverbs 24. Let's get started. 1 Samuel 31. The Philistines fought against the Israelites. The Israelites ran away from them. But many Israelites were killed on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines kept chasing Saul and his sons. They killed his son Jonathan, Abinadab, and Melchishua. The fighting was heavy around Saul. Men who were armed with bows and arrows caught up with him. They shot their arrows at him and wounded him badly. Saul spoke to the men carrying his armor. He said, Pull out your sword. Stick it through me. If you don't, these fellows who want circumcised will come. They'll stick their swords through me and hurt me badly. But the man was terrified. He wouldn't do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. The man saw that Saul was dead. So he fell on his own sword and died with it. Saul and his three sons died together that same day. The man who carried his armor as he died with them that day. So did all of Saul's men. The Israelites who lived along the valley saw that their army had run away. So did those who lived across the Jordan River. They saw that Saul and his sons were dead. So they left their towns and ran away. Then the Philistines came and made their homes in them. The day after the Philistines had won the battle, they came to take what was what they wanted from the dead bodies. So they found Saul and his three sons dead on Mount Gilboa. So they cut off Saul's head. They took his armor from his body. Then they sent messengers through the whole land of the Philistines. They announced the news in the temple where they had set up statues of their gods. They also announced it among their people. They put Saul's armor in the temple where they had set up statues of female gods that were named Ashtoreth. Then hung his body up on the wall of Beth Shen. The people of Jewish Gilead heard about what the first one had done to Saul. So all their brave men marched through the night to Beth Shen. They took down their body of Saul and his sons from the wall of Beth Shen. They brought them to Jabesh. They, there they burned them. Then they got the bones of Saul and his sons and buried them under a tamarisk tree at Jabesh. They didn't eat anything for seven days. 2 Samuel 1 After Saul died, David returned to Ziklag. He had won the battle over the Amalekites. He stayed in Ziklag for two days. On the third day, a man arrived from Saul's camp. His clothes were torn. He had dust on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground to show his him respect. Where have you come from? David asked him. He answered, I have escaped from Israel's camp. What happened? David asked. Tell me. He says, Israel's men ran away from the battle. Many of them were killed. Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. David spoke to the young man who brought him the report. He asked him, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? I just happened to be there on Mount Gilboa, the, the young man said. Saul was there too. He was leaning on a spear. The enemy chariots and chariot drivers had almost caught up with him. Then he turned around and saw me. He called out to me. I said, What do you want me to do? He asked me, Who are you? I am Malachi, I answered. Then he said to me, Stand here by me and kill me. And kill me. I'm close to death, but I'm still alive. So I stood beside him and killed him. I did it because I knew that after he had lost the battle, that he would be killed anyway. So I took the crown that was on his head. I also took his armband. I brought them here to you. You are my master. Then David tore his clothes. And all of his men tore their clothes. All of them were filled with sadness. They murdered over the whole nation of Israel. 
It didn't eat anything until evening. That's because Sully and Jonathan and the Lord's army had been killed by swords. David spoke to the young man who, who had brought him the report. He asked, where are you from? I'm the son of an outsider, an Amalekite, he answered. David asked him, why weren't you afraid to lift your hand to kill the Lord's anointed king? Then David called for one of his men. He said, go, strike him down. So he struck the man down, and the man died. That's because David had said to him, anything that happens to you will be your own fault. What your own mouth has spoken is a witness against you. He has said, you said, I killed the Lord's anointed king. So David sang a, sang a song of sadness about Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that it be taught to the people of Judah. It is a song that I played on a stringed instrument. It is written down in the book of Joshua. David said, Is a, a, a gazelle lies dead on your hills? Your mighty men have fallen. Don't announce it in Gath. Don't tell it in the streets of Ashkelon. If you do, the daughters of the Philistines will be glad. The daughters of the men who haven't been circumcised will be joyful. Mountains of Gilba, may no dew or rain fall on you. May no showers fall on your hillside fields. The shield of the mighty king lies in respect of them. The shield of Saul lies there. It isn't rubbed with oil anymore. The bow of Jonathan did turn back. The sword of Saul did return without being satisfied. They spilled the blood of their enemies. They killed mighty men. When they lived, the Saul and Jonathan were loved and respected. When they died, they were not parted. They are faster than eagles. They are stronger than lions. Daughters of Israel, moan over sword. He is just you in the finest place. You decorated your clothes with ornaments of gold. Your mighty men have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies dead on your hills. My brother Jonathan, I'm filled with sadness because of you. You are very special to me. Your love for me was wonderful. It was more wonderful than the love of woman. It has mighty men have fallen. Their weapons of war are broken. After Saul and Jonathan died, David asked the Lord for advice. Should I go up to one of the towns of Judah? He asked. The Lord said, Go up. David asked, Where should I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. So David went up there with his two wives. Her names were Hinoam from Jezreel and Abigail from Carmel. Abigail was Nabal's widow. David also took his men and their families with him. They made their homes in Hebrew and its towns. Then the, then the men of Judah came to Hebrew. There they anointed David to be king over the people of Judah. David was told that the men from Jabesh Gilead had buried Saul's body. So he sent messengers to, to speak for him. The messenger said, Your kind bury the body of your master Saul. May the Lord bless you for it. And may he now be kind and faithful to you. David will treat you well for being kind to Saul's body. Now then, be strong and brave. Your master Saul is dead. And the people of Judah have anointed David to be king over them. Abner, the son of Nun, was commander of Saul's army. Abner had brought Saul's son Ishbosheth to Mathanaim. There Abner made Ishbosheth king over Gilead, Ashuri, in Jezreel. He also made him king of King over Ephraim, Benjamin, and other areas of Israel. Ishbosheth was four years old when he became king of Israel. He ruled for two years, but the people of Judah remained faithful to David. David was king in Hebron and over the people of Judah for seven and a half years. Abner, the son of Ner, left Mahanaim. He went to Gibeon. The men of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went with him. Jab, the son of Zeruiah, and David's men also went there. All of them met at the pool in, in Gibeon. One group sat down on one side of the pool. The other group sat on the other side. Then Abner said to Joab, 
Let's have some of the young men get up and fight. Let's tell them to fight hand to hand in front of us. All right, let them do it. Drive said. So the young men stood up and were counted off. There are twelve on the side of it, and Saul's son Ishbosheth, and there are twelve on David's side. Each man grabbed one of his enemies by the side. Each one stuck his dagger into the other man's side, and all of them fell down together and died. So that place in Gibeon was named Halkath Hazorim. The fight of that day was very heavy. Abner and the Israelite lost the battle to David's men. The three sons of Zeruiah were there. Their names were Jared, Abishai, and Asherah. Asherah was as quick on his feet as a wild antelope. He chased Abner. He didn't turn them to the right or the left as he chased him. Abner looked behind him. He asked, Asherah, is that you? It is, yet. Then Abner said to him, Turn to the right or turn to the right or left. Fight one of the young men. Take his weapons away from him. But Asherah would stop chasing him. Again Abner warned Asherah, Stop chasing me. If you don't, I'll strike you down. Then how could I look your brother Joab in the face? But Asherah refused to give up the chase. So Abner drove the dull end of his spear into Asherah's stomach. The spear came out through his back. He fell and died right there on the spot. Every man stopped where he came to the place where Asherah had fallen and died. But Joab and Abisha chased Abner. As the sun was going down, they came to the hill of Amnon. It was near Gia on the way to the train empty land close to Gibeon. The men of Benjamin gathered in a group around Abner. They took their stand on top of a hill. Abner called out to Joab, Do you want our swords to keep on killing us off? Don't you know that all this fighting will end in bitter feelings? How long will it be before you order your men to stop chasing their fellow Israelites? Joab answered, It's a good thing you spoke up. If we had, men would have kept on chasing them until morning. And that's just as sure as God is alive. So Joab blew a trumpet. All the troops stopped. They didn't chase Israel anymore. They didn't fight anymore either. All that night, Abner and his men marched through the Arab Valley. They went across the Jordan River. All morning long, they kept on going. Finally, they came to Amahanaim. Then Joab stopped chasing Abner. He gathered together the whole army. Besides, Asherah, besides Asherah, only 19 of David's men were missing. But David's men had killed 360 men from Benjamin, who were with Abner. They got Asherah's body and buried it in his father's tomb at Bethlehem. They, then Joab and his men marched all night. They arrived at Hebron at sunrise. The war between Saul's royal horse and David's royal horse lasted a long time. David grew stronger and stronger, but the royal house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. The sons were born to David in Hebron. His sons were his first son was Ammon. Ammon's mother was a Hebron from Jezreel. His second son was Kilia. Philip's mother was Abigail. She was Nabal's widow from Carmel. The third son was Absalom. His daughter was Maka. His mother was Maka. She was the daughter of Talmai, the king of Geshur. The fourth son was Adonijah. His mother was Haggai. The fifth son was Shef Shephatia. He, his mother was Abitil. The sixth son was Ephraim. His mother was David's wife, Echo. Those sons were born to David and he won. The fighting continued between David's royal house and Saul's royal house. Abner gained more and more power in the royal house of Saul. While Saul was still alive, he had a concubine named Rizkah. She was the daughter of Aya. Ishbosheth said to Abner, 
Why did you sleep with my father completely? I know we was very angry because of what they, because of what Ishbosha said. So he went and did. Do you think I'm only a dog's head? In my own Jesus side? To this day, I've been faithful to the royal house of your father's soul. I've been faithful to his family and friends. I haven't handed you over to David. But now you claim that I've sinned with this woman. I'll do for David what the Lord promised him. If I don't, may God punish me greatly. I'll take the kingdom away from Saul's royal house. I'll set up the throne of David's kingdom all over Israel and Judah. He'll rule from Dan all the way to Bishop. Ishbosheth didn't say, didn't dare say another word to Abner. He was much too afraid of him. Then Abner sent messages to David to speak before them. They said, Who will rule over this land? Make a covenant with me. Then I'll help you bring all the Israelites over to your side. Good, said David. I will make a covenant with you. But there's one thing I want you to do. Bring Saul's daughter, Michael, to me. Don't come to see me unless she's with you. Then David sent messengers to Saul's son, Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth. He ordered them to say, Me and my wife, Michael. She was promised to me. I paid for her the price that was demanded. I paid for her with the skin of one hundred circumcised Philistines. So Ishbosheth gave the order. He sent men who took Michael away from her husband, Paltiel. Paltiel was the son of Laish, but her husband followed her to Bahurim. He was crying all the way. Then Abner said to him, Go back home. So he did. So Abner talked with the elders of Israel. He said, For some time you have wanted to make David your king. Now do it. The Lord made a promise to David. He said, I will rescue my people, Israel, from the power of the Philistines. I will also rescue them from all their enemies. I will rescue them through my servant, David. Even though I spoke to the people of Benjamin in person. Then he went to his people to tell David everything. He told him what Israel and all the people of Benjamin wanted to do. Abna had 20 men with him. They came to David at Hebrew. So David prepared a feast for Abner and his men. Then Abner said to David, Let me go right now. I'll go together all the Israelites for you. After all, you are now my king and master. The people can make a covenant with you. So you can rule over everyone you want to. So David, so David sent Abner away. And he went to his peace. And he went in peace. Just then, David's men and Chalab came back from attacking their enemies. They brought with them a large number of amount of goods they had taken. But Abner wasn't with David in his throne anymore. That's because David had sent him away. And he had gone in peace. Jab and all the soldiers with him arrived. Then he was told that Abner, the son of had come to see the king. He was told that the king had sent Abner away. He was also told that Abner had gone in peace. So Joab went to the king. He said to him, he said, what have you done? Abner came to you. Why did you let him get away? Now he's gone. You know what Abner, the son of Ner, is like. He came to trick you. He wanted to watch your every move. You came to find out everything you were doing. Then Joab left him. He sent messengers, messengers to get Abner. They brought Abner back from the world of Syrah. But, but David didn't know about it. When Abner returned to him, Joab took him to one side. He rode him into an inside room. Joab acted as if he wanted to speak to him in private. But he really wanted to get even with him. It's because Abner had spilled the blood of Joab's brother, Ash Ashael. 
So Jonah stayed in Abner and stuff, and he died. Later on, David heard about it. He said, I am the people of my kingdom, I am going to you, spelling the blood of Abner, the son of Nun. We are free of blame for events served the Lord. May Joab and his whole family line be held accountable for spilling Abner's blood. May Joab's family never be without someone who has an open sore or skin disease. May his family never be without someone who has to use a crutch to walk. May his family never be without someone who gets killed by a sword. And may his family never be without someone who doesn't have enough to eat. Joab and his brother Abisha murdered Abner. They did it because he had killed their brother Asherah in the battle of Gibeon. David spoke to Joab and all the people who and all the people with him. He said, Day of Puts, put him put on the rock club and keep away when they sat. Murder when you walk in front of Abner's body. So David himself walked behind it. Abner's body was buried at in Hebron. The king wept out loud at Abner's tomb. So did the rest of the people. King David sang a song of sadness about over Abner. He said, Should Abner have died as, as simple people do? His hands were not tied. His feet were not chained. He died as if he had been killed by evil people. All the people moved over Abner again. Then all of them came and begged David to eat something. They wanted him to eat while it was still day. But David made a promise. He said, I won't taste bread or anything else before the sun goes down. If I do, may God punish me greatly. All the people heard his promise and were pleased. In fact, everything the king did pleased them. So on that day, all the people were there and all the Israelites understood. They knew that the king didn't have anything to do with the murder of Abner, the son of Ner. The king spoke to his men. He said, Don't you realize that a great commander has died in Israel today? I'm the anointed king. But today I'm weak. The sons of Zerubia are too powerful for me. May the Lord pay back the one who killed Abner. May he pay him back for the evil thing he has done. Chapter 4 Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, heard that Abner had died in Hebron. Then he wasn't so brave anymore, and all the Israelites became alarmed. Two men in Ishbosheth's army led small bunny to attack their enemies. The names of the men were Banner and Rechab. They were sons of Rimmon from the turn of Beulah. Rimmon was from the tribe of Benjamin. Beulah was considered to be part of Benjamin. Let's go catch the people who used to live in Beulah have run away to the tapes. They have lived there as outsiders to this day. Jonathan, the son of Saul, had a son named Mephibosheth. Both of Mephibosheth's feet were hurt. He was five years old when the news that Saul and Jonathan had died came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and ran. But as she, but as she hurried to get away, he fell down. The tail's feet were hurt. Rechab and Banner started out for the house of Ishbosheth. They were the sons of women from Beulah. They arrived there during the hottest time of the day. Ishbosheth was taking his early afternoon nap. Rechab and his brother Banner went into the inside part of the house. They acted as if they were going to get some wheat. Instead, they stabbed Ishbosheth. In the <coughs> then they slipped away. They had gone into the house while Ishbosheth was lying on his bed in his bedroom. They stabbed him and killed him. Then they cut off his head and took it with them. They jumped all, the, all night through the Arab fire. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to the king day, to King David at Hebron. They said to him, Is the head of Ishbosheth the son of Saul? So was your enemy. He often tried to kill you. Today the Lord has paid back Saul and his family. He has let you get evil with them. He 
You are walking the most. David gave an answer to Rechab and his brother, Benina. They were the sons of women from Beulah. David said, The Lord has saved me from every trouble. Someone once told me, So is dead. I thought he was bringing me good news, but I grabbed him. I had him put to death in Ziklag. That's the reward I gave him for the news, for his news. And that's just to show us the Lord is alive. Now he knew the men had killed a man in his own house. He hadn't done anything wrong. He killed him while he was lying on his own bed. He spilled his blood. So shouldn't I spill your blood? Shouldn't I wipe you off the face of the earth? Then David gave an order to his men. They took Rechab and Ben. They cut off their hands and feet. They hung their bodies by the pool of Hebron. But they buried the head of Ishbosheth in Abner's tomb at Hebron. Chapter 5 On the third day, David went to Proverbs 24. Do not want what evil people have. Don't want to be with them. In their hearts they plan to hide out. With their lips they talk about making trouble. By wisdom it has to build. Through understanding it is made to kill. Through knowledge is swims after it with priceless and beautiful things. Wise people have success by means of great power. But those who have knowledge have strength. If you go to war, you surely need guidance. If you want to win, you need many good advisors. Wisdom is too high for foolish people. They shouldn't speak when people meet at the city gate to conduct business. Anyone who thinks that simple things to do would be known as the one who plans evil. Foolish plans are simple. People hate those who will make fun of others. If you go weak when trouble comes, your strength is very small. Save those who are being led away to death. Hold back those who are about to be killed. Don't say, but we didn't know anything about this. Doesn't the God who knows what you are thinking see it? Doesn't the God who guards your life know it? He'll pay back everyone for what they have done. Eat honey, my son, because it is good. Honey from honeycomb has a sweet taste. I want you to know that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there's hurt for you tomorrow, so your hurt will not be cut off. Don't hide and wait like a burglar near a godly person's house. Don't walk there. Even if godly, per- godly people fall down seven times, they always get up. But those who are evil trip and fall when trouble comes. But don't be happy when your enemy falls. When he trips, don't let your heart be glad. The Lord will see, but he won't be pleased. He might turn his anger away from your enemy. Don't be upset because of evil people. Don't look for what sins have. Tomorrow evil people won't have any hope. The lamps of sinners will be blown out. My son, have respect for the Lord and the King. Don't join with the officials who disobey them. The Lord and the King will suddenly destroy them. Who knows what trouble those two can bring? Here are more sayings of wise people. Taking sides is cool is not good. The curse will fall on those who say the guilty are not guilty. Nations will ask for bad things to happen to them. People will, people will speak against them. But it will go well with those who sentence guilty people. Which blessings will come to them? An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Put your outdoor work in order. Get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Don't be a witness against your neighbor for no reason. Would you use your lips to tell lies? Don't say, I'll do to them what they what they have done to me. I'll get even with them for what they did. I went past the field of someone who didn't want to work. I went past the vineyard of someone who didn't have any sense. Thorns had grown up everywhere. The grounds was the ground was covered with wheat. The stone wall had fallen down. I applied my heart to what I observed. I learned a lesson from what I saw. You might sleep a little or take a little nap. You might even fold your hands and rest. Then you would be poor, as if someone had robbed you. You would have little, as if someone had stolen from you. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. 
They're so good as you have respect for the Lord. They find great delight when they obey God's commands. Their children will be powerful in the land. Because they are honest, their children will be blessed. Their family will have wealth and riches. Their family, oh, they'll be blessed for doing what is right. Even in the darkness, light shines on honest people. It shines on those who are kind and tender and godly. Good things will come to those who are willing to learn freely. Good things will come to those who are fair in everything they do. Those who do what is right will always be secure. They will be remembered forever. They aren't afraid when bad news comes. They stand firm because they trust in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They aren't afraid. In the end, they'll see their enemies destroyed. They spread their gifts around to poor people. Their good work continue forever. They will be powerful and honest. Evil people will see it and be upset. They will grind their teeth and become weaker and weaker. What evil people want to do can't succeed. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as you have been so forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye. Amen.